<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can modify any PS3 model using PS3 HIN. Now, you did hear that correctly. In case you do not know, PS3 HIN is a homebrew enabler, which allows you to do a lot of the same things you can do with a custom firmware. This is not a custom firmware, this is not a jailbreak, but it does give you access to homebrew, emulators, really all that fun stuff. And it's a great solution for PS3 consoles that have no access to custom firmware. Now again, if you have a PS3 fat, a slim, or a super slim, this will work. But this tutorial is specifically going to be for firmware 4.86. So if you're on a lower firmware, this will show you how to get updated, and even if you're on firmware 4.86, you're still going to have to run an update or two here. So we will need a few things to get started on here. Of course, first we're going to need the PlayStation 3 itself with internet access. We're also going to need access to a computer, which also has internet access. We're going to need a USB drive to transfer a few files. And I'm also going to recommend having a legitimate PlayStation 3 controller, as well as a mini USB cable on hand, just so you can hook that up to your PS3, because I am going to be recommending going into recovery mode at one point. So first of all, let's go ahead and take our PS3, and let's check the firmware itself. We can go over to our settings, system settings, and there's going to be a few options I recommend changing here. First of all, I recommend for what's new to turn that off. Next up, we can go all the way down to system information, and in here, you should be able to see your system software version. So if you're on a lower version than 4.86, this will get you up to date. If you're on 4.86, such as I am right here, regardless, you're still going to be following the same steps. So this is going to be for firmware 4.86 and lower. So with that here and with our internet access set up, let's go ahead and move over to our PC with the USB drive. All the links that I'm going to have for downloads are going to be linked down below in the description. But first of all, there's going to be a link for 4.86 HFW, which is hybrid firmware. And we have to be on 4.86 HFW in order to do this. For this here, you can simply go to the PSX Place article, and down here, click on the 4.86 tab, and then you can click on the mega link available here. This is going to ask you to download a file, and then you can save it. Now, I've already downloaded this before, so I can just click save. Next up, I'd also recommend grabbing yourself some homebrew. So for this, I'm going to be using Multiman as my first example. I like to use this as a first example just because it's a nice tool, it's a good first piece of homebrew to have, and it can help you start running game backups and all that fun stuff. So for this, this is also going to be linked down below in the description. You can simply download the latest version which is available at the time of watching this. I would also recommend downloading a MD5 checker such as WinMD5 or use any of your favorite tools. I know I normally recommend Online MD5, but for this particular HFW file, I noticed that Online MD5 doesn't accurately get the MD5 hash of it. So if you're using Windows, you can simply go and download this, click on Win MD5 Freeware Download. So let's go ahead and prepare our flash drive and get that out of the way. You will need a USB drive or a flash drive of some kind, and it must be FAT32. If you want to check that, you can simply right click it, go to Properties, and if File System shows up as FAT32, you're good to go. However, if you need to format it, first of all, back up any data you care about off this USB drive, and then right click, Format, select FAT32, quick format, and you can start. Now, what if you have a USB drive that is too big for FAT32? As you can see, this one is NTFS and XFAT, but no FAT32, and that's what the PS3 needs. So for this, we can use another tool, and there's several other options available, but I'm going to be utilizing this specific tool. This is going to be FAT32 format or GUI format. For this, you can simply click on this photo here and download the EXE. Make sure you close out of any Windows Explorer or File Explorer windows such as this. But before that, make sure you also note which USB drive you want to format. Mine is going to be the H drive. 
right click and run GUI format or FAT32 format as administrator and say yes to this prompt if it comes up. Now simply select your drive, mine is going to be H, quick format, start, and OK. And it's done, easy as that. If you get an error such as this, that means you did not close out of a File Explorer or Windows Explorer window. Again, I was really serious about that. Any windows like this, you gotta exit out of them before formatting. If any are open, this will not successfully format. So now with all of that done, let's go ahead and copy over the files we need. First of all, for our homebrew, it's going to be very easy. Simply go into the root of your flash drive and copy and paste any homebrew you want to install to the root of your flash drive such as this. It's just going to be a PKG file like this. Next is going to be HFW, so I recommend right click and extract this into its own folder. When you open up that folder, there's going to be a folder containing a hash ID, this is the MD5 hash, and there's also going to be a update file, and this is the update we're going to install. For this, you can simply copy it out, go to the root of your flash drive and create a new folder and call it PS3, all uppercase, all one word. Go into that folder, create a new one, call it update, all uppercase, one word, and inside of your update folder, you want to paste in the update file. Now what we want to do is check the file integrity of this. So for this, you can right click and extract WinMD5 into its own folder, open this up, and open up the WinMD5 application. Now we can either drag and drop it in or click browse. And for this, you want to go to the flash drive itself to PS3 update, get the update file and wait for it to verify. And if you remember this folder I was talking about, you just want to click it and copy out the name of the folder itself. So that's going to be the hash. Now you want to highlight this here, paste and click verify. And if both of them say matched, then congratulations, your update file has successfully downloaded and copied over. If this is not matching, this needs to match, but if it doesn't match, you might need to recopy it to your USB drive, try another USB drive, re-download the file, um, do anything else, maybe even try another MD5 checker, but it should match right here. So we can exit out. The last thing we need to do is on our flash drive, go to PS3, update, and for our update file, we must rename this to ps3updat.pup. And if you want to make sure that this is the right name, if you're on Windows, you can click on View and tick File Name Extensions. And that's exactly how it needs to look. So again, this is how our entire flash drive should look. In the root of it, any homebrew we want to install will go there. On here, we also need a PS3 folder, inside of that an update folder, and inside of that, ps3updat.pup. And once you have all of that, your USB drive is 100% ready to go. So we can simply right click, eject this, remove it from our PC, and pop it into the PS3. Over at the PS3, hook up your USB drive, make sure it is detected, and now go over to your settings, system update, update via storage media, and it might say this, no applicable update data was found. Or it might even tell you that you're on the same version or what have you. So if you're able to update through system update here, then that's fantastic. But if not, then you can update through the recovery mode. Updating through system update, if you're able to, is pretty easy. You simply just have to allow and say that you agree to the terms and such. It's then going to copy the update to your system, reboot, install the update, and it will reboot again. One thing to note, if it does get to 100% and restarts during the install process, that means it was successful. However, when you go over to system settings, and system information, the version number will never change. So even though you're installing a different type of update, the version will still say version 4.86, even if you're on 4.86 or what have you on there. So nothing is going to say here HFW, it's still going to say version 4.86 if it successfully took it. So now if you've updated once through system update, it's recommended to update a second time through recovery mode. If you want to update again through here and you're able to, that's two updates through there you can do, fantastic. Otherwise, you want to do two updates through the recovery mode if you can't update in here at all. 
So for this, we need to turn off our system completely, then hold down the power button to turn the system on until it turns off, and then hold it in again one more time to turn it on and only let go when it beeps twice at you. I'm going to show you all how to do that, but first, let's turn off the system. Here, this is where you will need to hook up your PS3 controller to your system and then press the PlayStation button. Now go all the way down to System Update and then make sure your USB drive is plugged in with that 4.86 HFW update on it and press Start and Select at the same time. If you set up everything properly, it should begin to prepare the update, which at this point, it's just going to copy the update to your system and then reboot. Once your system restarts, it should show the hybrid firmware. Press the PlayStation button, and here, just wait a few seconds. Next up, you can just agree to this like you might have had to before. Press the X button, and let it install. So again, you need to install twice, whether that be once through XMB and once through recovery mode, or twice successfully through XMB or twice through recovery mode. Regardless of what you do, you need to do this twice before we continue. So once you come out of recovery mode, you are going to have to restart your HDMI settings and such. Just say yes to this and say yes yet again. Now, as you can see, we were able to boot up just fine here. So we still have our USB drive hooked up. That's all good. Next up, we're going to do everything within the internet browser itself. So you can just open up the browser here and there's going to be a few settings that we need to tweak. To anyone following and installing this, I would like to point this out as a giant warning. Do not ever enable factory service mode or FSM with PS3 HIN, and do not install CC API with PS3 HIN. Doing either of these can brick your system. Do not do it. You've been warned. First of all, press the triangle button, go up to Tools, Go to Confirm Browser Close, and you want to turn this off. Now go back to Tools, go to Home Page, and we want to use a blank page for this. Press OK. Go to Triangle, Tools, go to Delete Cookies, go to Tools again, Delete Search History, Delete Cache, and the last thing here is going to be delete authentication information and now close out of that. The reason why we did that was so we could have the cleanest base for a internet browser that we can start with. This step is going to be completely optional and this is only if you're going to use on the fly licensing for package files. If you plan to do that, it would be recommended to make a secondary account, a secondary PlayStation Network account and sign into that. Now, I don't really use this system primarily, so I only have my secondary account on here. But for that, what you can do is go over to PlayStation Network and go to sign in. You could either create an account here, or if you have a secondary account that you'd like to sign into, you can go ahead and sign in now. So at this point, go over to account management, system activation, PS3 system, game, activate system. And there we go, our system is activated. So that's a completely optional step, but this is a step you should do if you have access to a secondary PlayStation Network account and you want to make use of on-the-fly licensing for package installs on PS3 HIN. So now we can press OK on that and exit out of here. I'm also going to sign out for extra measure. So now let's go ahead and go to the browser and this is where the rest of the work is going to be. So open up your internet browser, now press the start button, exit out of here, and we're going to go to the ps3exploit.com site. It's going to be spelled just like that and it is supposed to be missing the E. So once you have all this, 
press start. Now this message always changes on here, but once you read it, you can press OK. Now I'd recommend pressing the select button and add this page to your bookmarks. Now we can come up here to PS3 HIN. Now you can select either the regular installer or you can select the HIN installer alternative. And I notice I have some differences here between the two with which one works better and which one doesn't. Typically, I use the alternative one. So this is what I would recommend doing. Now, the HIN installer, the regular one, is easy enough to do. You just enter this and you have to initialize and then you install HIN. And everything's pretty self-explanatory. The HIN installer alternative has some on-screen instructions with what to do once everything is initialized. So I'm going to use the alternative on here. For this, you can just pick whichever one you want and press X. Now just go ahead, let the installer load, and then let it do its thing. I also recommend with whichever installer you're using, press the select button and add that installer to your bookmarks just in case it fails out and you need to access it easier. So as you can see, that worked for the first time for me, but there's a few other things that you can do if it doesn't work for you the first time or even the second time or even the third time, because sometimes this can fail a few times. One of the things you can do is close out your browser completely if it fails, restart your system, open your browser back up, and then hit the select button and load the installer from there. If you're not having success with that, the other thing you can do is open up your browser, find the hidden installer that you've selected, and set that installer as your home menu. So that way, as soon as you open up your browser, the HIN installer runs right off the bat. Either way, regardless of how you did it, once you get your HIN installer successfully executed, here we can just follow the on-screen instructions for using the alternative. So I'm going to close out of my browser and then come up to Remote Play and enter Remote Play. Now, once you enter Remote Play, press the back button to exit. And now you can navigate up to Install HIN. This is a new icon that's here. Enter here, press X to install, press Yes, and now let it download and then install PS3 HIN. Once that's completed, press back, and now we need to turn off our console completely and turn it back on. So once you turn your system on, you should have a bit of a different cold boot, but as you can see, our system looks almost the same, except it has enable hen and a package manager. So if you have this, congratulations, you have successfully modified your system using PS3 hen. So now I'd like to spend a few minutes just kind of going over the usage of PS3 HIN, just general things for anybody who might not have used it before, or you need a refresher. First of all, every single time you turn on your PS3, if you want to install anything, if you want to run game backups, run any games that you've installed, run any homebrew, any emulators, you have to enable HIN. So you simply press X over here and let it do its thing. It's going to open up the browser, it's going to enable HIN, and after a few seconds it should say welcome to PS3 HIN. Now the nice thing is you don't have to be online to enable PS3 HIN. That's right, at this point you can disconnect it from the internet. However, if you are connected to the internet, every time you do that, it is going to check for a PS3 HIN update and it should automatically update PS3 HIN if there's a new update out. If it does not automatically update, or if you want to check out anything else, you go to Network, and there's a few other things here. PS3 Exploit Home is now available, so if you just want to easily go to the PS3 Exploit website, you can simply hit X on here, and it brings you to the PS3 Exploit site. Easy enough. You can also go over to Hybrid Firmware Tools, and there is plenty of stuff that is available here that you can play around with if you so choose to. Now, the other thing I was wanting to mention was the PS3 HIN updater. So if for some reason there is an update out, you're connected to the internet, but you haven't taken it, you can force a PS3 update here and even look at the change logs and all that fun stuff. So that's about all you need on there. Now, what about installing a package or installing any type of homebrew? 
Well, since we put a piece of homebrew, which was Multiman, on the USB drive, just on the root of it, you can go to Package Manager, Install Package Files, Standard, and there's our Multiman. So just press X over this, and let it install. This will take a few seconds. In the meantime, I'd also like to direct you all back to the Multiman page, because Brewology has a whole ton of awesome homebrew for PS3 Hen and just PS3 in general. I'd recommend going over to the homebrew section and just kind of browsing here at one point and see what you might like, what sounds interesting, and what might or might not wor work for PS3 Hen and what might make it better for you. There's plenty of really awesome stuff for the PS3, so if you've never experienced homebrew before, you're in for a treat. Anyways, with this finished installing, we can exit out of here, and as you can see, Multiman is now showing up. So let's go ahead and launch some homebrew for the first time. So as you can see, we now have Multiman up and running. Congratulations if this is your first piece of homebrew, but there is one thing I like to change here. And if you've seen any of my other setup videos like this, this is generally what I do. I'd recommend coming over to settings, theme audio, and disable this, not only so the audio is not consistently looping and you might or might not get tired of it, but also it does help out with performance and such just in general that I've noticed with Multiman. So over here, I do have one game that I have dumped from a disc that I own, and I have the ISO of it sitting on my USB drive. Let's go ahead and fire this up here and I'll just press the X button to launch this. Now, as you can see right here, I have my homebrew, I have the disc, even though I don't actually have a disc in here, but this is a game that is sitting on my USB drive right now. Let's fire it up. So there we go. As you can see, it's booting up, it's working just fine. That's exactly what I expected on here. And I generally pick this game as a demo just because it's small and it gets the job done, it can easily fit on my flash drive. But either way, congratulations, you should now have Homebrew working on your system. If you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial in regards to how to get set up with Multiman and how to do some stuff like what you're seeing right here, dump your games, run them off internal storage or USB devices, I do have a full tutorial covering how to use Multiman and such on my channel, and that will be linked down below in the description. So one last thing here as a gotcha in terms of general usage, what if you try and turn on your PS3, you go over to some homebrew, you try and launch it, and you get an error such as this. Well, this is because you did not launch HIN first, so you need to back out, go to enable HIN, and again you have to do this Every time you turn on your PS3 and you want to use some homebrew or some emulators or play a game that's installed or what have you, you have to launch HIN first and then you can launch your homebrew just fine. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. As a last thing, I'd like to shout out and give a huge thank you to the PS3 exploit team, not only for really pushing the scene forward and always developing some really awesome solutions, whether it be the Flash Dumper, the Flash Rider, Han, PS3 Hen, and now even the recent PS3 toolset, but even just the record turnaround time we've seen for a problem and a solution here. For anyone that doesn't know, on March 30th or March 31st, depending on where you're at in the world, PS3 Update 4.86 came out, and by April 2nd, we had PS3 Hen and PS3 Toolset public releases, as well as custom firmware from Juni for Rebug. So I, that's just overall, that's just something I've never seen done that fast, but it's been fantastic and really just big thanks to the PS3 exploit team for doing this. Their website will be linked down below in the description, so if you want to see some more about them or even support them, you can check out their site and find out more. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.